Tutorial Tuesday. This is a little series where I break a new uh, collection out of my stash and we create something with it. Today we're working with Graphic 45's Cottage Life collection. This is so beautiful. I've had this for, I guess I got it early in the spring. It came maybe late March. And I did make a mini album that was a special order in my Etsy shop. And I had these leftover pieces. And since I haven't done a make a card with your scraps in a while, I thought this would be a really fun project for us to tackle. It's Monday morning here in North Carolina, day after Mother's Day. I hope y'all had a really wonderful Mother's Day and a great weekend. And this just seemed like a good way to kind of crank up my week and get the creative juices flowing. So I will just talk a little bit about the first thing I do when I have a bunch, you can see I just have a bunch of random scraps here. Here's something from the 12 by 12 pad. There's papers from the eight by eight. I've got a bunch of images from the eight by eight. I've got scraps from the patterns and solids, just all different sizes, all different, you know, patterns. And the first thing I like to do, as you can see, is I've sorted them by pattern. So I can very quickly look and see what will work with what. So I'm thinking I want to work with this beautiful rose floral. And I think I want to pair that up with this blue um, uh, pattern, just a very simple blue pattern. And then I think I want to top that with this pattern. And I also went through my scraps of white cardstock. I'm not letting my myself use anything that is not a scrap this morning. It has to be a scrap. So I found a pre-made five by seven or seven by five card base and a couple of pieces of white. So if I need to mat, I can do that. And we're just going to put together a very quick, very simple, very beautiful card. How's that sound? And you can watch it come together. Okay, the first thing I want to do is create a little background. So I've got these half inch strips of um, the text paper from the Patterns and Solids. And these are all seven inches long. And I'm just lining these up and I'm creating a little mitered corner. Let's cut this one to five because we need some that are five. And I'm just putting these so that the one side is perpendicular to the other. And you do want to make sure they're really lined up because otherwise your mitered corners won't meet. Now, if you don't want to mess with mitered corners, you can just overlap that. But mitered corners are a really, they look nice. So I'm going to give it the old college try here on a Monday morning. So you can see I just keep lining them up and cutting from corner to corner until I have all four of them done. All right. So first I'm gonna put down this one on the side. And I don't mind having a white edge on a card I'll tell you the main reason I don't do it, and this will probably make you laugh, but when you're editing photos, that little white edge can be a booger to deal with. So I, um, I try to cover that up as much as possible. My photo editing program does not like that white edge and it will carve whole pieces out of a, out of a photo. So anyway, we're just laying these down. This is a great paper saving trick because it ends up looking like you've used a whole five by seven panel, but you haven't. You've just used these little strips that otherwise you might not find a purpose for. So, but you still get the benefit of having a background on your card. But 
Now I'm going to come in with this pretty piece of the rose pattern and I want to trim this just over five and three quarter inches and this is going to go on here and then I'm going to take this pretty blue and do the same thing I want to make sure these match up okay so I'm going to put the blue piece down first And then I'm going to come in with this rose pattern. And put it on the top. Then I've got this, I don't know, this is maybe three and three quarters. This is a piece that was left over from the pages I had cut. So this is three and seven eighths by six and a quarter. And I'm gonna mat this on our white. And this goes over the top. Very simple, right? So now, I like this Keep Life Simple image. And I went into my Rene Bouquets and I found this beautiful wreath. And I just want to figure out how I want this oriented and this on is the gonna, page. I'm going to position my image behind the wreath. I'm going to come in with my Dries Clear Adhesive and I'm just going to glue this in place here and here and here and here. Pretty. All right, looking good. And we can decide, do we want this straight or do we want this at a bit of an angle? Then I brought in her beautiful floral girl, which I think goes so well with this. And I'm gonna pop her up on foam tape. Hold on, I will be right back. I found this piece of Renee Bouquet's lace. And it's got the roses on it, so it kind of works really well with this because I felt like I needed to add a little texture to this to make it really work. So I like this along the top. I'm gonna put my score tape along the top, burnish it down. Trim it off on the ends. And I feel like with lace like this, you really do want to center it. I just think if you do that, it just doesn't look good. So I want to take it and I want to find one of these points, like right here, and I just want to press this in place. right across the top and then I'm going to come in and trim along the edges oops see how that looks centered 
And then you can come in with a little bit of your Dry's Clear Adhesive and you can put it along the edge like that so that that will lay down the way it's supposed to. And the same thing over here. It will also keep the ends from fraying. And that tiny little bit of glue. I wouldn't use anything that doesn't dry clear, however, because it'll it'll show and you don't want that. All right, looking good. All right, okay, so I've taken my wreath and I've put, in foam, I've put foam tape on the back and then down here on the flowers because I just wanted to raise it up a little bit. And using the image and the larger part of the flowers as a base uh, for this foam tape is really great on a thin, a very thin wreath like this one. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of hot glue to reinforce the bond. And I want to slip this just like this. And I want this lace to come up over the top, I think. All right. And now I've taken our flower lady from Renee. I put a double piece of foam tape here so that she'll sit level. I just want to add a little. And let's bring her in right about here. Perfect. Then I've used this beautiful um, small check. I think this is called Coral Rose. This is from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And I just want to tuck this in right here. And I'm going to use the point of my scissors. And then I'm going to fluff these out to make them do what I want them to do. Like that. Very nice. And then I also have an iridescent bow to go on top of that. Just like that. Looking good. And then here's a little cluster of these strawberry lemonade roses. So beautiful. And a little leaf. These are also from Renee Bouquets. All right. And then my floral cluster right there. Pretty, pretty. All right. And then I got this beautiful pink Aurora butterfly to sit right here. I think I want it right here. I'm just gonna leave that there and look at it for a minute while I make up my mind. And then I also want her to have flowers underneath her feet. So I'm gonna create a little, because I want her to look like she's not floating in midair. I always find that disturbing. <laughs> It's like, wait, come back to Earth. I like things to be anchored. I'm going to take a couple of leaves like this. And I'm going to bring in some more of these beautiful, beautiful strawberry lemonade roses, which I think go really well with the wreath. I'm just going to plant them around her feet. And I think these are the minis. She has large ones and then she has these minis. I think these are the minis.
I'm just going to take a couple of these really itty bitties and tuck them in to finish things off. Yes, and I like my butterfly there, so I'm going to put some hot glue. And I like to angle that so it's going into the picture. And now I just need to look at this for a minute and see if I think there's anything else that I want to add. All right, guys, I didn't feel like this was quite finished. It looked a little, I don't know, just not quite finished to me. So I clustered together three more of these small roses and I'm going to tuck them in underneath our butterfly. I tied another tiny bow and this is really tiny, it's only about an inch. To put in behind these and kind of anchor them there. Okay, so now we've got here to here is a triangle. And now I want to bring my triangle up here. So this is new in Renee's shop. These are her little um, new little trinkets. I will link these in my blog post. And I just brushed this very lightly with a little bit of ivory chalk paint. And then after about 15 seconds, I just very lightly wiped over it to create a little contrast. And... I'm going to put my glue on the branch. But then just to make sure that it will stay put where I'm putting it, I also put those little foam tabs. And I moved the lace back underneath the wreath. I didn't like it on top of the wreath. So you can tell me what you thought about that. And then I just... Um, threaded a couple of shell buttons to sort of finish out. And to me, this looks more complete. This looks more dug. So you can let me know what you think in the comments. It's always entertaining for me to read your thoughts. So there's the outside of the card. And on the inside, I had this big piece of the blue. I don't know. I call these irises. I'm not sure what they are. But I just made a simple fold-up gusset pocket added another of the images, matted this on white, created a little sentiment panel over here with more scraps. And the only thing that I used was not that was not in that scrap pack was the wreath and the flower lady um, and the butterfly. Everything else was scraps and textiles, which, you know, you're always allowed to use textiles on a card. Um, so that's really cool. I'm, I'm pleased with this. This turned out to be a very beautiful card. I hope you enjoyed this Tuesday tutorial. I would love to hear your comments. And uh, you can go to my blog where I'll have a linked supply list so you can find all of these goodies. All right, guys, I got to get my craft done. I have a lot to get done. I'm finishing up a Button Farm Club card kit. You'll see that in a couple of days. So I got to go hit the old computer and write tutorials and edit videos. But I wanted to pop in real quickly for a Tuesday tutorial. All right, guys, go get your craft on. Bye.